to make this demo work, we have to first uh, disable Windows Explorer protection. You can see here, I already disabled uh, all the Explorer protection. If you didn't do that, you have to do this to make uh, the demo work. And uh, after you disable all the Explorer protection, then you may have to reboot the system so that the change will take effect. Okay, today we are going to uh, perform a buffer overflow attack against uh, this program. You can see here is the main function, and then under this main function calls function f with uh, the command line input. Then for this function f here, you can see we have a local buffer with uh, eight bytes. Then the string copy is not a safe one and it's not a very safe a function. And uh, so when we copy this uh, user input into the buffer, this may cause buffer overflow. And uh, this is uh, the Python code we are going to use. And uh, so the key idea here is that we are going to create and we are going to create a string here. And uh, so this string, you can see here, it contains the piling contains the address used to overwrite the written address of function f and this is the shell code okay and it has three parts so so this is the code and uh, this is the python code and then you can see here at line 8 here we are going to actually open a command shell and within the command shell i'm going to actually uh, run the victim program this winter program with uh, this uh, environment variable as uh, the command line argument. Okay, so here is uh, what we are going to do. So let's first actually generate uh, this uh, uh, shell code. So here you can see the idea is we are going to use winexec to pop up a calculator, and uh, so. Here, this is uh, the ASCII code for calc.exe. We don't have a space here, actually. And uh, so you can see here, right? So we'll, at line six, 16 here, we do XOR, ECX, ECX, and we push ECX, ECX basically is a null, and uh, the null byte here. Then here we push uh, the string for calc.ese then here basically we are preparing uh, the stack and uh, then we call this function when esec so you can see here i hard code the when ese address here this is just a demo and how can we get uh, the address of uh, when esec and uh, so this is how we are going to do it so we are just using r when and uh, kernel kernel 32 when exec you can see this is the win exec address okay and then i'm just replacing this here good we we'll assemble this code and where we are, I think we are at this folder. Good. Then we actually link the generated object code. Okay. Good. Then we can use uh, the immutable debugger to get uh, the binary code. Actually, it's here. I already have the link here. Okay, it's, so it's here. Okay, so let me go here. Okay, so I'm going to use binary, binary copy. Okay, so this will be put here. Okay. Okay, so I need to actually replace 
there's a space with a slash x. Replace, 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 replace. Okay, so that's all we need to do for this one. We also need to get uh, actually this uh, jump ESP address. So we are going to use uh, the address of uh, the instruction called the jump ESP to overwrite the routine address, okay? And uh, so how do we find the jump ESP? And uh, we can actually use a new debugger to find it. And uh, for a new debugger, there's a Python utility called Mona. And uh, we can use this to find out actually where is a jump ESP. Okay, you can see we are here. So this is, we have jump ESP here at this address. We can just copy here. Okay, here. Because uh, we need to use a little India here. File two, A, B, seven, nine. Seven six. We don't need to change this part because this one's fixed. Okay, so now we have our Python code, and uh, so we are ready to deploy it. So we have everything here. Python explode. 2py. Okay, good. So then we run the we run this uh, victim program, and uh, with this uh, environment variable, and we should get uh, the calculator. Okay, we are good. Okay, so now let's have a look at uh, how do we get this 20. So the padding here is 20 bytes, and uh, Let's see how we can know why it's 20 bytes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a immutable debugger to find out. And so let's open the program. So it's buffer string copy two. Okay. So now the problem here is uh, where is our main function, right? So it's harder to find out. And uh, so that's why I often use uh, ID to find out where it is. So I already have it here. You can see it's, it's that uh, 4015 DB. Okay, 4015 DB. 4015 DB. So it's here. Okay, I think this is right. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to to the breakpoint, and uh, there is uh, the call calling this uh, C0. So, so this is uh, our function f, OK? And so let's find out. I'm going to talk here, too. Okay, so we run to here. Oh, so I need to actually set uh, the argument. So I, I'm going to put uh, 16 A's here. Okay, so I need to restart. 
but uh, the breakpoints are preserved. You can see it's preserved. So when we come here, so we're going to call the function. So you can see here, now the stack is here, right? The stack address is here, so not ESP. And uh, ESP is here, C0, 61FE, C0, 61FE, C0. So, so if we step inside, okay, now you will find out because we are actually calling this function, the retain address of this function will be put onto here, FEBC here. Okay, so you can see here the stack address here. I mean, ESP will decrease, we'll find out. So if I do step into, you can see, right? So you can see BC here, now it's the address, at this stack address, and we have, uh, we have this, we have this address, 4015F9, that is a 4015F9, okay? So that's a return address. Okay, so this is a function f's return address. So when we call function f, function f's return address will be pushed onto the stack. Then we are here. And then what I'm going to do here is I want to actually find out when we do the string copy and uh, where are those uh, 16A's written to. So I'm going to actually put a breakpoint here. So, okay. So that's six zero, right? So you remember our, uh, this is uh, our actually uh, function F's written address. Remember this, right? And uh, so you can see here after we execute string copy, then you can see we copy the A to the buffer. Then you can see here, these are the 16 A's. Then here are four bytes. Then here's return address. You can see we just the 20 bytes as a padding. Then the next four bytes, you can see here, uh, the return address. So that's why here we need a 20 bytes. And the next one is uh, the address we use to overwrite return address.